Lots of blessings. We're here one more time, and today we're looking at expected return, variance, and standard deviation. So let's look at some formulas. So we have a situation where we, we're doing this thing without probabilities. So without probabilities, we're saying average return is just the total of the returns divided by the number of returns that we're looking at. For the variance, the variance, definition of variance is the average squared deviation from the mean, right? And this is the formula we use here. So each return, from each return, we subtract the average return square the results then it's total all of those results and divide by n minus one where n is the number of returns that we're looking at after we find our variance the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance so let's look at an example so the most recent returns on an investment are negative 15 percent five percent and 19 percent find the average return variance and standard deviation for this investment so average return so just add up and divide by it since it's three returns it add up and divide by three so negative 15 plus 5 that's negative 10 plus 19 9 all divided by 3 i get 3 percent for the average return all right so now for the variance we're going to subtract this 3 percent from each of those returns and square the results so here we go so negative 15 minus 3 all squared gives us 324 5 minus 3 2 all squared gives us 4 19 minus 3 16 squared gives us 256 so we have done that now just remember that the formula is the sum of the squared deviations divided by n minus 1 in this case n is 3 so we're going to do that divided by 3 minus 1 Right, so we add them up, 324 plus 4 plus 256 divided by 3 minus 1, which is 2, and our answer is 292, and that's our variance. Now, the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So the standard deviation is just the square root of 292, which gives us 17.09%. Now, if you notice, we did not put the units for the variance, and that's because the variance is the square of whatever unit we are dealing with. So it's easier just to leave the variance as a number. If not, we would have to set the squared percentage or the squared units. All right, so we have returns, 3%. Standard deviation, 17.09%. All right, now with probabilities, things are a little bit different. So with probabilities, we calculate the expected return, which is the sum of each return times its probability. So multiply each return by its probability and sum to get the expected return for the variance right we still find the square deviation from the mean where the mean in this case is the expected return so we subtract the expected return from each return and square the results but then we multiply each of those square deviations from the mean by the probability right so once we have done that and totaled we have our variance and of course as usual the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance all right, so here's an example. All right, uh, we have a situation where economy can face three states. It can either go into a recession, remain stable, or go into a boom. The probability of each of these states, 20% chance of a recession, 30% chance of it remaining stable, and 50% chance of a boom. Now, returns. If there's a recession, the return will be negative 10%. If the economy remains stable, the return will be 12%. And if there's a boom, the return will be 22%. So from this, we're expected to find the expected return, variance, and standard deviation. Right. So when we're finding the return, the expected return, right, we said to sum of the probability times the return. So we multiply each return by its probability and total to get the expected return. Important in this case that we use decimals for the probability. So we have converted each probability to a decimal. So here, we're just going to be saying, right, 0.2 multiplied by negative 10 plus 0.3 multiplied by 12 plus 0.5 multiplied by 22. And that gives us 12.6% for expected return. All right, so expected return, 12.6%. Now, for the variance, 
right? We said we want the squared deviation from the mean. So from each return, we're going to subtract the, ex the expected return. So we're going to have negative 10 minus 12.6 all squared. That gives 5, 10.76. We're going to have 12 minus 12.6 all squared. That gives 0 0.36. And then we have 22 minus 12.6 all squared. And that gives us 88.36. So we have our squared deviation from the mean. So in this case with the probabilities, we said that the variance is equal to the sum of the probabilities multiplied by the squared deviation from the mean. Cool. So it's going to be 0 0.2. Multiplied by 5, 10.76 plus 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.36 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 88.36, and all of that works out to 146.44. All right, so now we have our expected return and we have our variance. The standard deviation now is just the square root of the variance, so the standard deviation will be the square root of 146.44, and that gives us 12.10%. 12.1%. So we have had our risk return is 12.6% and the risk, which is a standard deviation, is 12.1%. Now, another measure of risk is the coefficient of variance, which measures our relative risk. Right? So the standard deviation measures the total standalone risk of the investment. Right? Total standalone risk of the investment, while the coefficient of variation measures the relative risk of the investment. So here we're saying the formula is standard deviation divided by the expected return. So 12.1 divided by 12.6. And our answer here is 0 0.96. And we interpret this answer as saying we face 0.96% of risk for each 1% of return that we are earning. Right? So we are facing 0.96% risk for each 1% of return that we are earning. Now, we can group investors in three categories. The first is risk averse. And risk averse people require a higher return as compensation for taking higher risk. Risk neutral here, persons seek the highest return and they are really not that concerned about the risk. And then we have the risk seeking. Now, these persons seek out risky investments because they have some potentially higher returns even though there may only be a small chance of getting a high return. Now, most investors are assumed to be risk averse, right? and the goal for those persons is to seek the best return trade-off. The highest risk return for a given level of risk, or the lowest risk for a given level of return, right? or just the lowest coefficient of variation. All right, so we've covered the concept, so we say as usual, Practice makes perfect. Don't practice until you can get it right. Practice until you are not getting it wrong. Eh? And that's when you know you have mastered the concept. Alright, so thank you guys and see you again soon.